Welcome back. This is Trending here on I-24 News. I'm Tal Heinrich, joined on set by our sexologist, Dr. Limor Blockman. Limor, thank you for being here. I understand that today we're going to talk about teenage sexuality and the parents' contribution yes. right, in this realm. Yes, it's very important because, you know, we keep on seeing these messages that teenagers get. It doesn't matter if it's young adults, and for that matter, uh, researchers took um, 150 high school and college graduates uh, and asked them, uh, it was women only, mm. and they assigned them into two groups, the, the, the subject and the control group, and, have them, and had them uh, read sexuality-related articles for magazine, popular magazines such as Cosmopolitan, and examine their attitudes afterwards. The other, the control group, had something to read that had nothing to do with sexuality, something completely irrelevant. And then they asked them about their attitudes and knowledge. And surprise, surprise, they found out that women who read sex-related articles were much more permissive in terms of their attitudes towards sex. They were much more open-minded about um, uh, premarital sex, didn't see it as sexual, as risky behavior, they were also um, were very empowered in terms of women's sexuality and self-pleasuring. They were uh, very open about it. Caucasian women empowered themselves much more than women of color, which was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And in general, uh, they saw this behavior, this, this consumption of this uh, knowledge as something that is both empowering and both problematic in terms of maybe, you know, risky behavior that is not take, taken into account in terms of uh, so safe you sex. So you personally think that we should expose people to more content of this kind? I think it should be um, under control. And this is where the next study comes in, where parents have uh, some form of contribution to their children's, uh, and I'm talking again about young adults, not young kids, but people that consume and engage in sexuality. And they asked, they took a group of 139 um, Teenagers, girls, again, and because you know, in terms of girls, the, the contribution is by, by far better and uh -huh. bigger because boys get messages from different places, and it's much easier to maneuver. So to that's speak. right. That's right. I right. see where you're going. All right. Yes, and then they took a group of 100, uh, 1171 parents, and they asked them, "What do you?" They they ran a questionnaire in terms of what it, what the kids know about sexuality. Do they talk to their parents? Where do they get this information? And it was a very surprising result to this that they found that 55 percent of these teenagers consider their parents a role model. Only 30 percent took their advice from peers and only 15 percent took the advice from celebrities, from people that they see online, all these things. But the problematic thing was that 78 percent of parents didn't understand that their kids were actually looking at them as a role model. For instance, a woman that is a mother and is very permissive in her behavior, in her own behavior, may, you know, contribute to her daughter's behavior as well. So I want to say, please, you know, parents, take into account that your position in your child's behavior is very imperative. But, you know, speaking of sexuality, some, sometimes I would assume that it's quite embarrassing for parents to talk about these topics. That is very true. That is very true. But I want to say that if you uh, put your all your effort into the educational system and other sources that will give, I don't know, a Planned Parenthood or other places that will educate your child, you're doing a, a, a miss... Uh, um, yeah. I, I would assume. And also, speaking about uh, parents' contribution, I don't know if you have a study about that, but the way uh, parents handle themselves, you know, in, in sexual exactly forms. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. yeah. If a woman is behaving in a, I don't know, permissive manner and her teenage daughter is watching that, that would be, you know, something that will contribute to her behavior. So please pay attention. I, I guess I'm asking uh, if a mother and a father do kiss at home or yeah. do hug at home, okay. how does it influence the oh, that child. Is, th is that it positive or negative? There or, are a lot of... Because yeah. it's embarrassing for both sides sometimes, I sometimes. would say. Sometimes not, on the contrary. I agree. But a positive behavior that shows kindness and courtesy and affection. I'm, I'm talking about affection that is not necessarily very vulgar or sexual. Mm -hmm. If it's affectionate and if parents are touching one another in a very affectionate manner, this is something that a, a teenager would take as something positive, as something that they can grow from and empower themselves. That's uh, very interesting information. Thank, Thank you. you so much for this. You have more for us? You, yeah, well, uh, another study that had to do with um, teenage sexuality again and uh, the exposure to popular music. 
on this end, <laughs> it was very problematic. Anything that had to do with popular music uh, during the last, I don't know, three decades or so was problematic. Girls were receiving only negative messages and boys were receiving wow. messages to, to objectify women and treat them as a vessel for their pleasure. So for that, it's I also something I can think of to... some of these songs right now. Absolutely, <laughs> that the messages were by far more sexual now than, I don't know, 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, uh, well, quite disturbing. Thank you so much for this, uh, Dr. Blockman, for all this Thank information you, you brought us today. It. And you should stick around for the next items that we have Absolutely. because it's also in the same respect. We uh, now move to the study that I've seen shared on every social platform today. Humans could become extinct, apparently, if sperm counts in men continue to fall at current rates. According to the international study, sperm concentration of men in Western countries has dropped by more than 50% in less than 40 years. That's concerning. And there's no evidence that the decline is leveling off. Data shows that the proportion of the male population with sperm counts below the threshold for subfertility or infertility is in fact increasing. Lead researcher Dr. Haggai Levine from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem said he was very worried about what might happen in the future. Well, we are worried as well. And now a new story, a ring that could protect women from being infected with HIV has been found safer for use in teen girls. This according to a study which took place in the United States. Infused with microbicides, micro the ring which sits on the cervix has been shown to cut infections by 56%. Experts say it frees women from relying on men to wear condoms and allows them to protect themselves also confidentially. After re recording success amongst teenage girls in the United States, plans are in progress to test it in Africa. That might be um, yeah, very interesting and very important. All right, we we're taking a short break here on Trending, but coming up next on the program, we'll have fashion blogger Rosa Sinaiski here in the studio. She will talk to us about her place in the fashion scene and maybe about the place of Israeli designers and uh, just Israeli common people on the street, you know, uh, when we talk about fashion. We're not so renowned for it, so we'll check it out later. Okay, do come back to us right after a short break.